Welcome back everyone, it's time to go balls deep into Jujutsu Kaisen. In this video, we are going over the main antagonist of JJK. And we are not talking about Sukuna this time around. We are going to cover the mastermind villain within Geto Suguru, who was revealed in the recent chapters of the JJK manga. Oh, and if it wasn't obvious, this video will contain spoilers! Don't say I didn't warn ya. But essentially, we are going to break down everything you need to know about Brain Kun, who is currently in control of Geto's body. The same dude who orchestrated the Shibuya incident, manipulated all the other cursed spirits from Mahito to Jogo, who was also present in the Heian period, and known to have taken over Norutoshi Kamo of the past, effectively creating the death painting rooms like Choso and the others. If you guys were confused about any of these things then you are in the right place. But before we start I want to thank you our ABD community for your continuous support. Like damn I never thought that we will be hitting 500,000 on a JJK video this soon. God damn. Uh it only goes to show how much JJK has grown within the anime community. And with your help, we can continue to push this great series to the forefront. So what I'm trying to say is that make sure you smash that like button, you know, just black flash it right now. <laughs> Okay, so first and foremost, there is one main point to understand, and that is that Geto Suguru is actually dead. In fact, he has been dead for a while. However, his body, along with his curse technique, is being used by an unnamed cursed user that the community has dubbed Brain Kun or the Brain. This is because in chapter 90, we find out that during this mastermind's interaction with Gojo, where after confirming Geto's death, the current body reveals themselves as a different person by removing the stitches on Geto's forehead, taking the top of the skull off to show a talking brain. Yes, like this shit had a mouth. A brain with a literal mouth. Oh! You guys are probably wondering how did this little turd of a brain even get into Ghetto's body? And what happened to Ghetto? Well, although we don't know much in detail, but sometime after the events of the JJK prequel, you know, Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 0, the Suguru Ghetto was beaten by Yuta and Rika's final blast of love, then finished off by Satoru freaking Gojo himself, Ghetto's corpse was left to be taken by his dedicated followers Nanako and Mimiko. Ghetto was Gojo's best friend and he probably let his followers have his body out of respect. It would make sense considering that these girls mentioned they won't even forgive Gojo but will let things be because of his relationship with Geto. Regardless somehow Brain Kun, who more than likely was occupying another body, got a hold of Geto's corpse possibly by making a deal with one of Geto's followers or something along those lines. Either way, from chapter 93, we learn that not all of Geto's allies blindly followed this brain. We know this because of the girls interaction in Shibuya where they demanded Geto's body back from the brain after Gojo was sealed. They mentioned how they cooperated killing the non-sorcerers so he should fulfill his promise. Sadly, Brainy San refuses saying, next time you make a promise with a sorcerer, I make sure it's a binding wow. Pretty savage if you ask me. But this not only reiterated that the brain is not a cursed spirit, but also a sorcerer. To add to this, within the recent Jujutsu Kaisen fan book, in the question and answers, Octomi stated that the brain we see is the actual brain of Brain Kun's original body, where even normal people can see it. In addition, Octomi also confirmed that the body switching is a cursed technique belonging to Brain Kun. But the brain technically can have two techniques, one from his own original body, referring to his ability to switch bodies, and the technique of that stolen body. There are a few more interesting things that Octomi confirmed in the Jujutsu Kaisen fan book, so make sure you guys check it out, I might delve into it a bit more later on. Coming back to Geto himself, his followers, specifically Nanako and Mimiko, were bamboozled, hoodwinked, and then fooled by this brain. Geto's whole plan for the world was eradication of regular humans and there to be only Jujutsu sorcerers. He wanted all of this to achieve his ideal world peace. Due to that, this ideology was shared by many of his followers. After his corpse was taken over by the brain, as seen in chapter 114, Geto's followers had issues with how to handle getting back his body because some of them actually believed that the brain was still planning to fulfill Geto's wishes. It is interesting that Geto's followers have their confrontation on whether Brain Kun is fulfilling Geto's dream because it parallels the situation regarding his own possession. Geto's ability 
abilities, memories, and sometimes even his personalities leak through brain code. Whilst being sealed, Gojo shouts at Geto's corpse. How can you let yourself be used like that, Suguru? Causing Geto's body to actually react and grab his own throat. Very much like how Yuji Tadori grabbed his own throat to keep Sukuna from using his body. This proves that Geto's soul is kind of somewhat linked and alive to his body, contradicting Mahito's belief that the body only exists because of the soul. However, when specifically asked how much of Geto is alive inside of his body, within the fan book, Octomi answered simply, not much. It's like when a dragonfly can still move a bit when his head is ripped off, which is pretty sad to hear for all of us Geto fans who did want to see him return. But who knows, it might be another Toji Fuchiguru situation in the future, which I doubt, but it might be possible. Anyways, coming back to Nanako and Mimiko, they felt differently about this brain, as they did not only care about Geto's vision, but also had a very strong personal attachment to him. Nanako and Mimiko were the two girls that Geto saved from execution and can also be seen as the final straw for Geto going against the Jujutsu school and the higher ups leaving it to become a cursed user. In many ways, these girls were Geto's closest representatives. So after being duped by the brain, they offered Sukuna some of his fingers and requested from him to get back their beloved Geto's remains. But as we all know, Sukuna ain't one to give charity and sadly decimated these two girls from even existing. God damn! Coming back to the brain and Ghetto and where they differed in ideology, the whole point of Ghetto wanting to kill the non-sorcerers was because they were the reason curses were born. In chapter 77, the special grade sorcerer Yuki explained to Ghetto that sorcerers cursed energy moves in a full cycle inside their bodies. However, for non-sorcerers, this cursed energy leaks causing curses to actually be born. Ghetto died with the belief that killing all non-sorcerers would have ended cursed spirits, so that sorcerers needing to fight would be over. Brain-kun in actuality wants the exact opposite. The brain wants curses to be abundant and for as many sorcerers to exist so that the golden age of cursed techniques can be reborn. We know all of this from chapter 116 where the brain explained to Yuki his goals. It all boils down to optimizing cursed energy as much as possible. You see, the brain believes that sorcerers, non-sorcerers and cursed spirits are just potentials of cursed energy in the form of living beings. He tells Yuki that there must be more to human potential. The brain then goes on a rant, saying that one cannot create something that can go beyond their own potential. Therefore, he has to create something outside of himself to see beyond his own potential. He's literally saying that he needs to create chaos that not even he can control. So whilst Ghetto's goal was to bring world peace where no cursed spirit exists for sorcerers to even fight, the brain's goal is to bring a world where there are many curses and sorcerers, ultimately pushing the limits of creation to some sort of evolution. But with all of that said, who exactly is this brain? Well, the brain and his plot goes back over 1000 years, where he made contracts with curses, cursed users, and even created the death painting rooms inside the supposedly evil Narutoshi Kamo's body 150 years before the current storyline. So yes, in a weird way, the brain is Choso's dad, but the body he used was Narutoshi's Kamo's, hence Choso's ability to use blood manipulation. It is unclear if the brain being a foreign to the body affects offsprings, but based on implications it seems there are none. Quite similar to Dio and Jonathan Joestar's situation from Jojo. It's also unclear when the brain got Norotoshi's body or how. Brain Kun has been hopping from bodies to bodies for years, more than likely adopting the personality of his host due to absorbing the memories and techniques. So how can he be sure that his personality is truly his? The brain also believes that the body comes before the soul. So if he has been jumping from bodies to bodies, does that mean his soul has been changing over time too? We also don't know whose body the brain was in before he took over Ghetto's. In an interview with Mondo Kobayashi, Octomi stated that he will definitely draw Itadori's parents at some point. It will involve Norutoshi Kamo and Choso. So does this give the possibility that the brain was in fact in one of Itadori's parents? This would also kind of explain why Choso sees him as a brother. Well, this is just my speculation for now. There are so many questions that still needs to be answered, but what we do know is that due to the fact this brain is from the Heian period, the chance that this his brain original self knowing Sukuna on a personal level or a second generational level is actually very high. I'll explain more about Brain Kun's relationship with Sukuna in a bit so make sure to stick till the end. And the only confirmed bodies the brain has used so far was Kamo Norutoshi and its current one Geto. The brain was able to manipulate Geto's followers then use his wits combined with Geto's memories and technique to continue his process to bring about this new golden age. But how exactly did he plan to do all of this? Well first the brain needed to get powerful curse spirits to 
together the cursed family four powerful cursed spirits that have strong resentment towards humanity to do his dirty work whilst he fed the information he gained from having a mole within the school wait a mole abd yes a mole a rat a snake riding round in a rover if i see oxen is over i'll send man straight to jehovah when i take shots like m sharapova but i'll get to that more in a bit but the brain though disguised as ghetto began helping the cursed spirits seemingly achieve their goals but in reality he was just using them to set the pieces up to seal gojo the number one threat to his plan and then henceforth release multiple curses also creating new cursed users when it comes to the relationship between the brain and the cursed spirits it's clear that he looked down upon them as we see from his interaction with hanami saying that he doesn't even know if these curses have any affection for each other and after hanami responded something to him the brain got upset and said talking big know your place cursed spirits this illustrated the brain's position in being a cursed user and in the jjk fan book Octomi was even asked if the curses were aware that brain couldn't look down upon them Octomi responded by saying that the feelings was mutual and their relationship was strictly business so from the very beginning there was absolutely no chance of loyalty between the curses and brain kun the brain even used used Mahito's natural desire to kill, letting him fight Yuji so that Mahito could evolve his technique further and then take that power to use it for his final goal of creating new sorcerers. The brain thanks Yuji for helping Mahito grow, mentioning how he was also planning to absorb Jogo but sadly he died against Sukuna. In the fan book, Octomi even mentioned how the brain could, could actually defeat each and one of these cursed family members but Jogo and Mahito would have still been a very difficult fight. Brain Kun waited for the right time to betray these cursed spirits when they were weakened and then as we see in chapter 136, after absorbing Mahito, the brain used his remote idol transfiguration technique to manipulate the bodies and souls of two types of non-sorcerers who he marked. One like and including Megumi's sister, Tsukumi Fushiguru, who the brain fed a cursed object to, and one like Junpei, whose brains were meant to be non-sorcerers, but they already had the ability to perform cursed techniques. The brain using Mahito's evolved technique literally molded them to become sorcerers. But wait, ABD! How is he making these new sorcerers and even using Mahito's abilities in the first place? Well, here's the thing. As I said earlier, we don't exactly know how the brain techniques work. So far, we do know that the stitches on the head are a clear representation of the brain's possession. And when it comes to the brain using Mahito's idol transfiguration, well, that's because of the brain being inside of the host. It's able to use the body's technique. In this case, Ghetto's curse manipulation. This makes sense considering it is said that curse techniques marks people's bodies. So effectively, Brain Kun is using Ghetto's ability because he is in his body and Ghetto's ability curse manipulation allows him to extract the technique of any curses and use it for himself but the technique cannot grow hence thanking Yuji for making Mahito grow before he absorbed him. So coming back to the brain's plan to create new sorcerers from non-sorcerers the ones the brain fed the curse object would go into a coma as the bodies would not be able to handle the influx of curse energy as unlike Itadori's body when he ate Sukuna's finger. So with idol transfiguration, the brain strengthened their vessels so they can utilize the power of the cursed objects. The brain also mentioned how the cursed objects within these humans had a seal which he now had broken. For non-sorcerers like Junpei, he increased their capacity to use cursed techniques, meaning they are now fully fledged cursed users. The brain then continued to explain to Yuki on how he wants to put these newfound sorcerers against each other so that it can become a time of battle, a time where people tap into the cursed techniques at their leisure. Again, this is all a part of the brain's true plan to bring back the golden age of the cursed techniques, formerly known as the Heian period. The brain elaborated on how he chose these non-sorcerers to become sorcerers. He carefully picked them knowing their potential and also carefully picked the cursed objects to be used. He then mentioned, think of it as releasing a thousand malevolent Yuji Itadoris. All of the brain kun's plan revolves around changing human understanding of cursed energy. The brain also mentioned how he already forgotten what regret feels like. This can easily be because of the body jumping and deal making he did over the years, Brain Kun has put their own personal morals aside to achieve the goals of bringing cursed energy to the front of the world, to create chaos that forces the people of Japan to acknowledge curses and curse users. So far it seems like he has no interest in taking over the world or becoming the leader of the 
new world order, but instead to explore the limits of human that uses cursed energy. This guy is literally trying to create hell on earth. This has nothing to do with becoming king of the world. The brain is just, you know, simply mad. <laughs> no, but seriously, all of the people that the brain has cursed till now have awakened and they are all given opportunities to do as they please, but in an environment that he has manipulated towards chaos. He had decided to give people who couldn't see curses the abilities to fight them now, just because he wants to see more people under the pressure of cursed energy. Now that Tokyo has become a place filled with curses, more and more people will feel despair and there weren't many sorcerers to begin with. It would only get easier for that chaos that the brain cannot control to take place. Tokyo will be the beginning of the world transition to accept cursed energy as a potential power source and the future for humanity. And in some ways it almost seems as if this Yon era that the brain kun is always talking about was a time that was survival of the fittest. And let's not forget that the Heian period was also the time that Sukuna was around and was also known as the king of curses. The brain wants that world of curse techniques to come back. And I know some of you guys are wondering why Brain Kun asked if Sukuna was listening to his rant and we do have a few theories on that but I'll just go through the main one which is that Brain Kun wants to see Sukuna use his power to keep up the age of curse techniques around for as long as possible. The way he could do this is by setting up a high stress environment for Yuji giving Sukuna more and more chances to take permanent control over his body. Brain Kun is trying to bring back the era where Sukuna was the most dangerous so he could actually want Sukuna to retake his place as the active king of curses. Sukuna is already the example for high level understanding of cursed energy. So if this Sukuna is back in the time where cursed energy is becoming known to non-sorcerers in the world, Sukuna could be the strongest catalyst to surpass the potential that Brain Kun is aiming for. Oh and remember the mole I mentioned that the brain had within the Jujutsu school earlier? I know some of you guys were probably thinking Mekomaru right? Well not exactly. Mekomaru aka Kokuchi was only one out of two moles that Geto had within the school. In chapter 73, Otohime tells the students that there are two moles Goja has suspected, one being a student and another being a higher up, even above the principal. Gokuchi even mentions that there is a second mole when talking to Meimei in chapter 91. This higher up mole could be the cause behind Gojo now being considered an enemy of the Jujutsu school. On top of that, it could also be another piece of Brain Kun's plan to continue the age of cursed techniques, which we will probably see more of that later on. But with that guys, I hope I explained everything that you guys need to know about Brain Kun and what he's trying to achieve. Also, if you guys want us to do a detailed video about Suguru Geto and his past, then let us know in the comment section below because we might cover that next. If not, let us know what other topics you want. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe and ding that notification bell to stay updated. With that guys, I'll catch you till next time.